city of rich culture, preserved temples, and peaceful Zen gardens. Kyoto is Japan's ancient capital where traditional architecture and a serene atmosphere provides the perfect backdrop to explore, relax, and enjoy the authentic matcha tea ceremonies. Hi, my name is Mia and welcome back to my third video of my trip back to Japan. In this video, I'm going to share the best things to do in Kyoto over three days from must visit UNESCO temples to quirky Zen experiences and foodie spots that you can't miss. Here's why we loved Kyoto and how to make the most of your time there. Enjoy! Action! So this is the map of Kyoto and you can see we've marked the key spots around different parts of the city. There is so much to do and see, especially around the main station area, which is also why we chose to stay nearby. But places like the famous bamboo forest and the golden temple are a little bit far on the outskirts. So you'll definitely need a few days to spread out your activities and so that you're not rushing your stay in Kyoto. So we were looking for a hotel that was close to the station, had a beautiful interior design and was budget friendly. And this place checked all the boxes. Just 10 minutes walk from the central station, it perfectly blends the contemporary design with the traditional aesthetics. The gorgeous interior features dramatic lighting, a minimalist yet spacious layout and we really enjoyed this traditional bedding style as well. You could have breakfast included and it was a choice of Japanese washoku or western menu and it was absolutely beautiful. The hotel also had a bath house which was such a treat for me and I think this was my favorite hotel out of everywhere we've stayed this time in Japan and I would definitely come back and recommend this place. After checking into the hotel, we headed out to visit one of the Kyoto's most beloved temples, Kiyomizu Dera. To reach it, you walk through this famous three-year slope, it's called Sanenzaka, known for its charming traditional atmosphere, lined with historic wooden buildings, souvenir shops and tea houses. The street is usually really busy with people no matter the time of the year, but I think we visited during the busiest season and the peak time of the day, which made it a little bit overwhelming. There are numbers of sweet shops to stop by and we picked up some mochi at the start of the street, which was a lot quieter. Kiyomizu Dera is Kyoto's most iconic temples, famous for its massive wooden stage that offers stunning panoramic view of the city and surrounding mountains. And you can enjoy different panoramic view which changes according to the season. The temple's name actually means pure water temple and it's built over a waterfall that believed to have healing powers. If you're an architecture enthusiast like me, you'll also find the wooden construction especially Especially fascinating as it's known as kakezukuri in Japanese. It's a traditional architectural technique used to build wooden platforms on the steep slopes and this method allows for large stable structure without the use of nails relying on interlocking beams and pillars to support its massive structure. Just a five minutes walk from Kiyomizu Temple, we randomly stopped at this incredible handmade soba restaurant. It's right in the touristy area but tucked away enough to feel a little bit more peaceful. You get to enjoy fresh soba noodles in a beautiful traditional Japanese Zen setting. Kyoto is famous for its high quality water, which is why the city is known for its tofu, sake and soba, all of which relies on a great water for the best taste. This place, Sobashiki, uses top grade buckwheat and their soba is freshly made by skilled craftsmen every day. They have different soba varieties on the menu and we also went around like 3.30 so it was less busy and fast service, super convenient and delicious spot for lunch. We absolutely loved it. 
p o n t o c h o is this super atmospheric little alley in Kyoto, right along the Kamo River. It's narrow, lined with traditional wooden buildings, and packed with restaurants and bars, from casual spots to super fancy ones. Walking through at night feels like stepping back in time. There are dimly lit lanterns everywhere, and if you're lucky, this is the area that you might spot geisha or maiko dancers. My boyfriend and I came here for a pre dinner drink and went into this retro style listening bar. I'll be completely honest, the cocktails weren't the best we've had, but probably like people come here for more of the vibe, and I still love this cozy, nostalgic atmosphere of the place. After a couple of drinks, we headed over for some sushi. It was a little late and we wanted something casual, so I took my boyfriend to the conveyor belt sushi. This place is called Sushi Zanmai and it's a chain restaurant, and I used to come here all the time when I was s t u d e n t in Japan since it's super affordable. This place is so good value for money, despite all the ingredients being super fresh and quite top quality. Um, at the end, we ordered about 14 plates, and our bill was only 4,000 yen, including few beers, which is about like 20 pounds. It's crazy to me now that I live in London and my lunch costs about 10 pounds. So, this place is definitely a unique and budget friendly must try at least once on your trip. On our day two, we decided to take it easy for a half day since we've been non stop traveling, packed with all the plans. So we hopped on a cab and headed to a local public bath. Kyoto isn't really known for hot springs, but you can find a great public bath pretty much anywhere in Japan. Public baths are quite a huge part of Japanese culture, and they usually offer like all kinds of options, like different t y p e of baths, sauna, steam room, and even massage for super affordable prices. It was the perfect way to unwind and recharge our energy. In the evening, we had booked an incredible dinner at Tan, a Michelin Guide listed spot in Kyoto. It's a small, cozy restaurant right by the Shirakawa River, perfect for an intimate meal. The interior felt very warm and elegant without being over the top, and we had to pre order the set menu, which was a beautiful blend of authentic and modern Kyoto cuisine. Kyoto can slightly be pricey for good restaurants, but every dish felt like a work of art, both in taste and presentation, and it's definitely worth for its experience. If you're looking for a peaceful night stroll in Kyoto, Yasaka Shrine is a wonderful option. It's open 24 hours and the shrine takes on a completely magical atmosphere after dark. There are hundreds of lanterns beautifully lit, which creates this amazing glow and is truly enchanting at night. From there, you can also continue walking up to Ninenzaka towards Hoanji Temple. It's just another 15 like, minutes walk away, and this path is so quiet at night, it almost feels like you're stepping into another world. This is so far away from the usual daytime chaos, and you really get to enjoy the calm and cinematic landscape of Kyoto. So, day three was pretty packed, but in a good way. We wanted to hit as many must see spots as possible, and our first stop was to the bamboo forest. We heard that it was gonna get super crowded, so we went early to grab some nice photos before the rush hour came, but apparently everyone had the same thought and it was still quite busy. Arashiyama Bamboo Forest is definitely one of a kind place. You walk through these like tall bamboo trees, and the air definitely felt so clean and fresh. It's calm and so peaceful, and if you like a walk in the nature, this is definitely a must visit, but I do recommend arriving early to avoid the crowds. Just a short walk from the bamboo forest is Arashiyama Monkey Park, where you can actually play with the Japanese monkeys. It's about 20 30 minutes uphill hike from the entry gate, and it's a little steep, but trust me, it's worth it. 
When we reached up to the top, we saw around like 20 monkeys just hanging out there quite like freely. But as soon as the staff made an announcement over the speakers to call for the feeding time, probably over hundreds of monkeys came down to fight over food. I thought it was really cool experience and the baby monkey was especially like really cute. Um, it was definitely the highlight of my trip for sure. And if you're in the area, why not visit the monkey as well? So this place is such a quirky Zen place. It's located a little bit out of the way from the rest. So we took a cab there, but I saw a place on Instagram and really wanted to come and visit. They have these like funny faces, which totally reminds me of like Spirited Away. There are about 1,200 of these. And apparently the statue represents the disciples of historical Buddha carved by regular people who just wanted to leave their own mark to support the restoration of the temple. I had never seen anything like this before and it was such a unique and fun visit. Not too far from the Otagi Nembutsuji, we found a local udon restaurant for lunch. We were actually on a mission to try as many different Japanese cuisine as possible on this trip and this place did not disappoint. I went for a classic udon, but I think the highlight was what my boyfriend had ordered, which was a bukkake udon. Um, there was a poached egg on top, and this caught us in surprise as it was the best udon we've ever had. I love it when you find a good place to eat by accident. And I also recommend you guys leave a time aside without a plan so that you can just explore the town as Kyoto is full of surprises. Next stop is Ryoanji. This is one of the top temples you must visit when you're in Kyoto. Ryoanji is famous for its iconic rock garden, which is always used as an example of Japanese zen and wabi-sabi. The garden features 15 carefully placed rocks, but it's designing in a way that no matter where you stand, you can only see 14 of the rocks at once. 15th rock remains hidden from the view, which kind of symbolizes the idea that true understanding and enlightenment are elusive and personal. The temple is inside a beautiful park where you can also enjoy some Japanese beautiful nature. The last cultural spot we managed to go on our last day was Kinkakuji, known as the Golden Temple. It's one of the most famous temples in Japan and I have visited here so many times in a school trip and with my family as well. You can walk around the pond and you get this incredible reflection of the temple in the water, which makes the picture very beautiful. And it was originally built in the 14th century as a retirement villa for a shogun and was later converted into a Zen Buddhist temple. The whole setting is so picturesque and it's one of those spots where you just have to stand back and take it all in. So for the last stop on our video, this is where we went to have a matcha dessert. I guess you can't leave Kyoto without trying an amazing dessert, right? Um, this place is called Matcha House and it is absolutely beautiful, delightful and so yummy. They specialize in all things matcha from rich green tea ice cream to perfectly crafted matcha lattes. And we ordered the matcha tilamisu, which was five out of How five. You can find matcha house in few locations around Kyoto. So definitely check it out when you're craving for some matcha sweets. So this was our three days itinerary in Kyoto. I hope you found it helpful and made you excited to visit Kyoto. If you have enjoyed watching this video, you might also find these other two travel videos from Hiroshima and Osaka. So feel free to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!